Do you like playing with RC cars? Do you like to turn the wheels of your RC cars? Well, you are in luck because we have these things called servos that let you steer your RC car. I'm John Holmes with Holmes Hobbies and today we are talking about the SHV 500 version 3 servo. Today I'm very happy to announce that we have come out with our version 3 SHV 500 servo. You may be familiar with our SHV servo line. We've had it for about four years now and we were the first in the industry to have a wide voltage, high voltage, super high voltage servo. So these are intended to run on 3 and 4S LiPo. Um, we have the dual wire so that you can have one that goes into your receiver and the other one that gets powered directly from your battery. And this prevents the need of a BEC completely, which is one of the draws to this servo. Along with that, they are blazing fast, extremely fast servos, and they also produce a whole lot of torque. On the version three, we bumped up the torque on here to, a, yeah, it's about 680, 690 ounce inches on 4S, or actually on 14.4, on a brand new charged LiPo, you'll get even more than that. So, you know, really we probably should have called these the SHV 700 or something like that. But I really wanted to be more honest about the ratings. And so I called them the 500. They still make over 500 ounce inches of torque on 3S LiPo, which is really what they're intended for. And of course, nobody is upset when you buy a servo that has an underrated torque spec on it. But to tell you the truth, there's a lot out there that have overrated torque specs. So I really wanted to avoid that. Uh, so if you do see that on the initial packaging, it looks a little bit lower on the torque rating. It is because I was just a little bit too conservative on that. And we have updated them on our website. So let's take a look at version two versus version three. As you can see, it is a little bit bigger. It's really only a millimeter larger in height and in thickness but all of that extra size goes into beefier gears. And that's really what we wanted to work on on this. And while we did bump up the torque, we really wanted to make sure that we had the most stout gears possible because that is really what most people in the rock crawler world have problems with is gears. We don't have servo savers on our rigs. We just pound the rigs on the rock all day long. We have U4 racers going fast, running into rocks at 20 miles an hour. And of course, people are gonna break gears. Fortunately, most customers are very understanding about running a servo with no servo saver breaking gears, but I just wanted to be extra bulletproof on the next version of servo and make it as, you know, just as good as possible. So along with the larger gears, which we see here, we did make some other improvements. So as you can see, the gear thicknesses have been improved, but the biggest change on here is that combined with the bigger gear thicknesses, we actually have much stouter pins. So the pins got increased from 1.6 to two millimeters in size. And while that is only a 25% increase in the size of that center pin and first pin, that is actually a 50% increase in the shearing strength of the pin, just because of the way circles grow, you know, math and all that kind of stuff. So along with the much beefier gear set and pins to support those gears, we inverted our O-ring seal on the top to make sure that it would just be as sealed as possible. It's just a little bit easier to install that O-ring for customers at home. We also kept the same waterproofing on the inside of the servos as always. So we have conformally coated PCBs on there. I wouldn't recommend dipping into the water on these like a submarine, but you know, I know that everybody's gonna do that anyway. Um, so we kept it as good as possible. If you would like to get into water, I will say that the one weak point on servos, pretty much all servos, is the feedback potentiometer. There's no good way to waterproof them and still keep them functional. So that is something to be careful of. What I would recommend, if you are going to go dunking all the time, take the back case off and fill it up with dielectric grease. This will actually keep the water out of the potentiometer and it generally doesn't freak it out. But just to be forewarned, if you get grease really deep inside of that potentiometer, sometimes it will cause it to have centering problems. It'll either jiggle or to want to overshoot and kind of hunt for that center. So just be cautious of that. We are working on ways to have more waterproof feedback potentiometers, but at this juncture, I would say, just be careful. Know that they're very water resistant in case design. We have waterproofed everything on the inside as much as we possibly can, but you always have to have a little bit of care when you're talking about getting electronics into water.
So if you do have any other questions about these servos, please post them down below. I will get to them, but I will end just on saying that we're really pleased with these. We've had extremely good testing. We spent about a year of testing these both in-house and sending them to our team, really rung them out to make sure that we had just the finest product that we could possibly have. And I'm really happy about these. I'm going to go install them into all my new rigs and go from there. So as always, I thank you for tuning in and have a good day.